Hello everyone, my name is Nick and today I wanted to sit down and discuss with you guys what I would consider to be the easiest prayer plants to grow. Now prayer plant is an umbrella term for any plant that falls into the Marantaceae family, which includes genera such as Calathea, Maranta, Tananthi, and Stromanthi. There are certainly more than that, but those four are going to be the most prominent ones currently on the houseplant market. And prayer plants are notoriously known for not being the easiest plants to grow. They do prove to be a little bit of a challenge for numerous reasons. Um, but there are a few that I have noticed over my last few years of growing them that they are definitely the standouts and I wanted to recommend them to you guys if you are looking to grow prayer plants or maybe have been struggling a little bit or are just looking to find a nice one to begin with. The first prayer plant I want to touch on today is this Maranta Lucanura Kirchoviana, or the green prayer plant. And Maranta as a genus is probably the genus of prayer plants that is most commonly referred to as a prayer plant. But Maranta Lucanura consists of many different varieties. Uh, this one particularly, as I mentioned, is Maranta Lucanura Kirchoviana, or the green prayer plant, but there's also Kirchoviana variegata, which is the variegated prayer plant or erythronera, which is the red vein prayer plant, maricella, which is the lemon lime prayer plant. There's a few more than that to mention, but uh, I find that this one right here, Maranta lucanera crotoviana, is the easiest one to grow. In fact, I've definitely had uh, my rough battles with some of the other ones, specifically the red vein prayer plant, which I'm sure many of you have had some very good luck with, but me, myself, in my home, I have not been able to successfully grow that one. But the green prayer plant has been my unsung hero. It is a little bit less uh, striking in terms of foliage than some of the other prayer plants, but this one is just so easy to grow. So I have a few of these around my home and I found that over the last few years, this has been um, a very, very easy prayer plant to grow. Now you're probably gonna notice that there are some brown tips on these plants. Uh, prayer plants, all prayer plants are sensitive to fluoride and some other chemicals in the water. So we always recommend that you use distilled water on these plants if you would like to keep them looking in tip-top shape. I have been watering it with tap water and I've had this one for about three years now and you can see that it's definitely been getting some of that burn. However, I always do stress that it's not something that you need to stress out about. Uh, you can water this plant with tap water a few times and it's not going to harm the plant in terms of the look. I find that usually it takes a, a well over a few waterings of tap water for my prayer plants to really start to get some of that burned foliage. And you might also find with your prayer plants at home, and you're going to see with some of these other prayer plants that I'm gonna talk about, that they might also get brown on the edges. So brown on the edges typically refers to, or is telling you that you are not giving your plants enough humidity, while brown on the tips usually is referring to the, or is telling you that the plant is getting burned from the, the, the water, the chemicals in the water. So that's just a few tips that I have for you guys. So like I said, if you wanna keep your prayer plants looking in tip top shape, you should use distilled water and you should keep the humidity high, which is two of the reasons why these plants are not necessarily novice house plants to grow, um, but they are very fun and rewarding house plants to grow once you can get them growing, which is why I wanted to share with you guys the ones that I think are much easier to grow. The next prayer plant I want to talk about is this Calathea mosaica. Now, if you have recently gotten a Calathea mosaica or are looking to get one, you might be breathing a sigh of relief right now because this plant is very easy to grow. However, I know it does not usually carry a low price tag. Um, but this one has really been one of the most giving Calatheas. Now, I understand my, mine might not exactly look like much, but bear in mind that I actually rescued this one from my work a year ago and it was not in good condition. It was flat, it was curled up, it just did not look good. It was very, very neglected. Don't ask me what happened. But I ended up bringing it home, adopting it, and trying to revive it. And this is what it looks like today. And I have actually some new leaves coming in. You can kind of see the one right here. That's probably the most prominent one. But um, yeah, a very, very giving Calathea, very, very easy to grow. Of course, as I mentioned, I'm not watering this with distilled water, um, hence why I do have a little bit of brown tipping going on. But this plant is very coveted, actually, for the mosaic variety, that, or uh, the mosaic pattern that the leaves get, as you can kind of see. You can see it a little bit better now. So this is what the plant is very popular for. Um, the, the foliage is beautiful, don't get me wrong, it's not the most striking Calathea out there, but it is fortunately a very, very easy one to grow. So if you do stumble across it, or if you can find it for a good deal, I would highly, highly recommend picking it up, because not only does this plant have some really beautiful, subtle nuances, the more you kind of appreciate the foliage, but um, 
it is a very, very giving and rewarding prayer plant to grow. Now, very similar, in my opinion, um, and also very easy to grow, is this Calathea macoyana. And actually, I kind of, when I say that, it kind of baffles me why this plant isn't a little bit more popular, because Calathea is, mosaica is very popular for the mosaic patterns that they call it, that the leaves have. And Calathea macoyana has those same exact patterns, and not only does it have those mosaic patterns, but it has some really beautiful uh, rabbit tracking to the leaves, is kind of what they refer to these markings as sometimes. So, yeah, a really, really beautiful calathea, and I would say Macoyana is straight, hands down one of the easiest calatheas to grow. Um, I've really enjoyed growing this calathea over the last two years, and it is just a joy. It's so gorgeous. I remember two years ago, I was like lusting after one. I wanted one so bad because I thought not only is the foliage so beautiful on top, but the beautiful um, undersides of the leaves look almost entirely different from the, the top of the plant. Um, and like I said, there are also some really beautiful like things, nuances that you notice about these plants, specifically um, the mosaic patterns that this plant has that I just don't think is as appreciated as it should be. So I would say that Calathea macuyana is pretty much on par in terms of care and looks with the Calathea mosaica. So two really, really beautiful Calatheas, really easy ones to grow. And I actually should mention that the Calathea macuyana in particular is very resilient. You can see that my leaves aren't really damaged as much as the Maranta Lucanura Cartoviana and the Calathea Mosaica are from me using tap water on the leaves. So I have a few that have a little bit of brown tipping to them, but yeah, this is um, a very resilient Calathea in terms of withstanding some of that neglect, I would say, from me using tap water rather than filtered or distilled water. So like I keep saying, I'm gonna be a broken record about the distilled water, but it is something that is important if you would like to keep your calatheas looking fresh and new, but this one in particular is one that really doesn't seem to mind a little bit of extra neglect. Speaking of neglect, I definitely have to point out this Calathea rufa barba. So this is probably not, once again, the most striking prayer plant out there. I do really appreciate the way the foliage looks, um, but it's very fuzzy. It's a very, very fuzzy plant, and it's known for its fuzzy foliage. I'm not quite sure what rufa barba in Latin means, but I wouldn't be surprised if it has something to do with the texture of these leaves, because it is ridiculously fuzzy, and I don't think it appears that soft, but it feels like you could just like wrap this plant around you and it would keep you warm in the winter time. Um, and I also would like to point out right here that you can see a little bit of that damage from uh, lack of humidity. I do keep this calathea on my bar cart back here and the humidity is not as high here in my living room uh, versus my bedroom where I do keep many of my prayer plants. But this calathea right here is so easy in terms of neglect or just care really overall. I neglect the crap out of my Calathea rufobarbas. In fact, I've had one for probably a year, a year and a half now at this point, a larger one that has withstood neglect so well that I ended up recently getting this one probably in the spring or early summertime. Um, and I've just been enjoying having it in my home. Like I said, there is a little bit of this um, damage from lack of humidity. I was gonna remove the sleeve, but I thought it would be um, better to show you guys. Um, but yeah, a really underrated Calathea because of the looks. I don't think that um, the look of it is really, you know, as saying as much for it as to, in terms of like the Calathea Macoyana and the Mosaica. They're definitely much more sought after in terms of their appearance. Um, but once you feel this plant, it really does um, do all the talking. And it does have some really nice purple on the back, which people really do appreciate. And it does show off a little bit more as the leaves move up and down throughout the day. But yeah, a really underrated Calathea, as well as a super, super easy one to grow. So if you do find this one, I would recommend it if you're looking to try out a new prayer plant. Not the most common one, but it has definitely been making um, its way um, into our houseplant market at, uh, over the last year or two. So definitely one that I would be remiss if I didn't mention. Next, we're gonna talk about Tenanthi Burl Marxii, which is probably my favorite prayer plant. I fell in love with this plant a few years ago, and I actually think that this plant in particular was one of the first unboxing videos that I ever did on YouTube a few years ago. So yeah, this plant is very special to me, but I just love the look of this plant. I love the fishbone pattern to the leaves. I think it's commonly referred to as the fishbone prayer plant, and it's got some really nice purple on the back of the leaves. But you're probably gonna notice first um, is how curled up the leaves are because I was a little neglectful on watering this plant. And that is this plant's way of conserving water when it is underwater. So the leaves curl up a little bit. 
these leaves will also react in this way when the plant is receiving too much light. So I always tell the customers at the store where I work to assess the situation if they ever find that their prayer plant's leaves are curled up like this. So check the soil. If it's dry, give it some water. If the water's or if the soil's wet, then the plant's probably receiving a little bit too much light and you should move the plant back. So it gives you a good idea of what the plant is in need of when you do find that the leaves are curled up. So I do really appreciate about these uh, these plants. But Tenanthi Burl Marxii I just find is a really easy growing, <laughs> easy growing, easy going prayer plant. Um, and I just absolutely love the foliage. It's not very difficult to find and it's not expensive by any means. So I just definitely have to recommend this one to you guys. There's also a new hybrid that I've been seeing over the last year or two of this plant that I have right here that is referred to as Tenanthi Amagri. Uh, I don't know why it has that name, but the, the foliage is just a little bit more, uh, the, the veination is smaller on the foliage, which allows it to really bring out that gray green color of the leaf. So I just think that's really awesome. Same purple background, but I just really enjoy that. So you can see the two of these next to each other. You can see how similar they look, but also the differences that they have. So two really, really easy plants. I highly recommend them. This is probably one of the easiest uh, prayer plants that I would say up there with the Maranta, Lucanera, Kirchoviana. If I had to pick like the two easiest ones, I think I would have to say that the Maranta, Lucanera, Kirchoviana and Tenanthi, Burl Marxii are like the easiest ones out there. Last but not least, I have to talk about my Stromanthi sanguinea, which I believe is commonly referred to as the silver stripe or silver streak stromanthi, if I'm not mistaken, because it has this little bit of a white stripe running down the mid vein. And I love this plant because I can't believe I haven't even said it yet, but if you guys follow me on YouTube, I'm sure you know that I love plants that have different colors on the undersides of the leaves. So pretty much all the plants I've talked about today um, fall into that category, most of them, not all of them, uh, but that is just a characteristic about plants that I absolutely love. Um, and I fell head over heels for Stromanthi sanguinea a few years ago. Um, I think it was like 2016, I was in Disney World actually, and underneath the Spaceship Earth, or the Epcot Ball as it's commonly known as, oh, I'm sorry if any of you are mad at me for calling it the Epcot Ball, but Underneath it, there was just a field of Stromanthi Sanguinea Triostar and this type. So under where it was a little bit less shaded, it had the Triostar, which is um, a version of this plant that has some white variegation that looks really nice. It almost shows off the pink coloration on the back or the red coloration on the back and it makes it appear pink on the front. And then further deep underneath the Spaceship Earth was the solid green ones. I just remember seeing that and I was just like, holy crap, that is a beautiful, beautiful plant. And I remember seeking after this plant for so long afterwards and I eventually was able to find it and it was not only expensive, but it died for me so fast. So I have tried it a few more times since then. I've learned my lesson that Stromanthi Sanguinea Triostar is not the plant for me, but I have found that Stromanthi Sanguinea, the plain version, is the one for me instead. So I really recommend this plant. It's been a really easy grower for me. I've actually only been growing this for maybe like eight months now, so I haven't even had it for a full growing season, so don't come for me, but I really enjoy this plant. I have to share with you guys. If you've been struggling with your Stromanthi Sanguinea Triostar, but you just love the plant like I do, and you really would love to have it grow in your home successfully, I highly recommend trying out this plain version of Stromanthi. It is such a joy and reward to grow. I really enjoy the red on the back with the plain green. I just think it's it's got almost more of a look to me than the variegated version, because that variegated version gets brown fast. And like I was saying, brown is kind of inevitable with these pear plants. In unless you're like prime conditions, unless you're giving them prime conditions. Um, but without that white variegation, this plant definitely looks a lot better with a little bit of brown. So that's my two cents about this plant, but I absolutely love it. This one has a place in my heart for me seeing it in Disney World a few years ago. I just really love it. So I had to share this plant with you guys. Thank you all so much for joining me today where I talked about what I would consider to be the easiest prayer plants or Marantaceae family members to grow. I'll definitely leave all of these plants in a list in my description. Thanks again for watching. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.